Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. Florida Bay is in trouble. Hypersalinity is a major threat. We visited with Dr. Jen Rahage of Florida International University's Institute of Water and Environment to understand more about how hypersalinity threatens the ecosystem. Florida Bay is one of your areas of expertise. Why is it such a beloved place for anglers and visitors from around the world? Many of us think of the bay as the crown jewel of the Everglades. Uh, if you fly over the bay, you get to the, to the tail end and you see this amazing patchwork of basins and mud banks and makes for this great fishing habitat. And why is Florida Bay such a critical ecosystem? It's unique in the way that it's shallow and has lots of light. And as a result, it has the most expansive seagrass beds in the world about 10% of the world's seagrass in Florida Bay. What does Florida Bay mean to anglers? I think fishing is a core quality and a core part of the identity of us as Floridians. As Floridians, we spend the most dollars fishing in the U.S. We have the most anglers and we have the best fishing quality. And Florida, Florida Bay is a huge part of, of that identity. Uh, where else can you fish for all these species, snook, sea trout, bonefish, tarpon, permit, in the same day? But there are major problems in Florida Bay. What's the biggest? The biggest problem for the bay is that the bay uh, has a chronic deficit of fresh water. It doesn't get enough fresh water, and it doesn't get enough fresh water all the time. If we think about the amount of fresh water the bay gets today, it's only about a quarter of what it would have gotten historically, which means the bay is salty, and it's saltier than it would have been from pre-drainage conditions. So what are some of the consequences of that hypersalinity? The salty conditions means that we have recurrent high salinity in the central and north central part of the bay, which makes it really, really stressful for fish. And it also means really low oxygen conditions that are stressful for fish and also for seagrass. And what's the relationship between the seagrass die-off and the algal blooms and further destruction in the bay? Low oxygen from hypersalinity creates this seagrass die-offs that we've been experiencing, as the seagrass dies, they release nutrients and those fuel algal blooms that usually follow the seagrass die-off events. And what happens is as the algal blooms sort of progress, we lose light to the bottom. And in turn, they can cause more seagrass die-off. So we can be in these cycles of seagrass die-off, more nutrients, algal blooms, but then fuel again, more seagrass die off, and we can stay in that state for quite a bit of time. In the big picture, what are the fixes that need to be done to help Florida Bay? I think there are two main fixes. The first one is we have to clean up the water um, that we have from ag in the northern part of the ecosystem. And that means creating more artificial wetlands to clean up water. We have them, they work really well. We have the largest man-made wetlands in the world, but they're too small. We need more land and we need to store water and clean up more water with those wetlands. The second part is that we need to be able to send more water south and not lose water to the urban zone. But there has been a bit of good news. Hurricane Irma, despite the negative effects on people and our communities, uh, brought these really good effects to the Everglades. And the hurricane gave us the kind of water levels that we're not able to achieve in the current state of the ecosystem. So that's really exciting. And it gave us a, a glimpse into how the ecosystem would respond if we got the water right. We saw the highest levels of wading bird nesting we've seen on record in the wetlands. And on the coast, we saw lots of spawning activity as a result of the freshwater flows and the hurricane itself. Lots of our fish went to spawn, and now we have tons of these little juvenile snook and sea trout and red drum that will make for really good fisheries in the years to come. So this hurricane's amounts of fresh water into Florida Bay has really shown us what we need to do to help fix the bay. We have thought that the Everglades would do amazing things and the ecosystem would respond, but we haven't been able to test that because we never had enough water. And we're years away from getting the, those levels of fresh water to the bay. Uh, and this is a really pleasant surprise that the ecosystem was able to respond in one year um, to those effects, to those effects of having high water and more water. But we're not gonna be able to depend on nature to do this. We're gonna have to make these fixes. 
We know that it's going to take a lot of land to create the conditions for cleaning up the water, and it's going to take some engineering to make that work and some compromises to get the water to the bay and to get the volumes of water we need because we need a lot of water. But we know that the bay is resilient and it can respond really well when we do create those conditions, so that's really hopeful.